Hey, it's Jeremy. Just wanted to welcome you back to chapter two. Glad you're uh, still here and ready to learn some more stuff to get that app program and published. So here's our action steps for this chapter. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to create a rough flow diagram. Um, then we're going to review similar apps um, and get some screenshots of stuff we like, um, things that work on other apps that we see and things like that. I'm going to show you um, some tools to build um, specs with something called Fluid UI, you can use Word, you can use PowerPoint. I'm going to show you examples of a lot of stuff that you can use. Um, again, the documents are attached to the chapter, so you'll want to kind of use those as well. Um, we're going to talk about a back-end system. So you'll have a back-end system because you may need a way to manage users or things like that or update things. So you'll have that as well. Um, we're going to talk about email funnels. It's probably a new concept, but um, when someone signs up for your app, you want to send them an email, like a welcome email, obviously. But there's a lot of things you could do funnel-wise. And when I talk about a funnel, that just means like um, maybe after a day you send another email, just a follow-up email. Maybe after three days you ask them to rate your app in the App Store. That's a very important step. You want to get ratings on your app. So there's a, a series of things you can do to drive traffic and keep people coming back. And so that's what we're going to do with the email funnel. So we'll talk about that. And then we're just going to get into brass tacks, the, the action step you're going to actually have to take is to create a specification for the developers and then you'll hand that off to the developers, create an Elance listing um, and go from there. So just before we get started really quick, if you, you know, you're going to have to do a little bit of work here. You can't just put it out on Fiverr and have somebody do it, but there are people on Fiverr that will create specs for you. You're going to have to give them something. So the first thing I do when I talk about or think of an idea for an app is usually I draw something on a piece of binder paper, right? And it's just a square and this will be the log and it's, it'll be some very rough flow. So maybe you have that, maybe you don't. If you don't, you should probably start working on that now. Now, the other thing you can do is on your phone, you can um, find some apps you like. Go to the iStore, search around the iStore. They don't have to be apps that do exactly what you need, but say you need like a registration page with credit card processing. Well, look at the apps that are on your phone and see, you know, log out and act like you're going to register again and see what it's like to actually go through registration. Are you going to use a Facebook login? Are you going to use a Twitter login? Are you going to create your own login? Are you going to have both? These are things you want to kind of consider for your specification. And then when you find something you like, you know, just hold the buttons down and take a photograph of it. That's what I do. Like if I find a page I like, I just take a photograph of it and then now I have it. And then um, I can email this to myself. And then once I have it emailed to myself, I can open it up on my desktop and play around with it a little bit more. So the first thing I want to show you is just a high level view of what we're going to be dealing with here. Um, the first thing is, you know, on your phone, basically what we're going to put on the phone programming wise is going to be HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. Now these are things that you use to program a website or a web page. Pretty standard stuff and it's simple to build. So that's what's actually on the phone. And then what we're going to do is once we have those files, we'll take those files and we'll, um, we'll put them into PhoneGap. And with PhoneGap, PhoneGap will spit us out two versions of the file. One will be um, for the Android store and one will be for the iOS store for iTunes. There's also for Windows Phone, if you want to do for Windows Phone, PhoneGap has that available too. I don't do that. I've never done it, but I know you can do it. It's very easy to do. It's just like Android and iOS. But anyways, here's what we have on the phone. That's all we're going to have on the phone, HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. Now, our JavaScript is actually going to call out to a PHP file. Now, a PHP file is just something that processes it. Just think of it as a processor. It is a programming language. But PHP, all it's going to do is process. So it's either going to log somebody in. Um, it might get some data from the database and display it back to the user. So there's different things that PHP will do. But all it is is just a web service. So we'll call it a web service. So the phone calls the web service. The web service would then call um, the SQL database to do whatever it needs to do at the database level. Insert a user, update a user, things like that. And then once it's done with that, it sends back to the PHP. The PHP can do a number of things. It can bill a credit card. It can send an email. It can do all kinds of different stuff. And then that's going to ultimately <clears throat> cycle back to the phone. And 
you know, give the user a different experience. So if the user logs in, it goes all the way out to the PHP, inserts it into the database, sends an email, and then comes all the way back. And that's just kind of a high level of what we're dealing with and how we're working with things. So I just wanted to give you that idea. Um, so again, let's get back to the spec and how we're going to go about doing that. And there's a lot of things. So I just want to show you a couple of specs that um, I've done or my clients have done for me. And these are pretty basic things that you know you can do to um, have a nice tool for your developers to work off of. Okay, here's the first one. The first one is Class Hoppers. And Class Hoppers is a mobile app for booking, well, for finding out what classes are near you, like exercise classes, yoga, Pilates, things like that. And then you can pay a drop-in rate through um, the app. So you just pay 15 bucks and you can go take a yoga at this gym or that gym. I developed this for a customer and this is actually what she made for me. This is a PowerPoint app. So here's something she did. She did a flow diagram. I don't know that you need a flow diagram, but it is very helpful to do if you want to do a flow diagram, if you're a little bit more detailed. Um, and then there's just these things like this. I mean, it's like homepage, you know, the, the default list of classes uh, today, 2.5 miles, you know, current time. But th she's just telling me how to order these things. Here's another flow diagram, the homepage diagram. Um, let's see. OK, so here's something that she, here's what she wants her app to look like. So she just created this in the center. There it is. Class offers um, over on the right. There's a filter. And then it says, look, if the filter does something, it pops up a screen for us to um, add a zip code. So we have location services. On the left-hand side, there's, that, there's the hamburger menu. And that's just kind of what the menu is going to look like over on the left. And that's what the pages, the, the class list page will look like. There's the, this is the uh, filter page. So if anybody filters and wants to look up classes tomorrow or in the afternoon or in the morning, there's a filters list. And that's what she would like it to look like. Here's the class detail page. Um, it has a map. You know, just a little bit more detail on the class. If you click the book button, um, here's, here's the booking flow. So she has that. There's all kinds of stuff on here. Um, and just to give you an idea, here's the, here's the thing. So this is the kind of stuff that um, you need to do. Let me show you another one. I will show you the one for shoe swipe. Um, this is the one I made. I made this on a Word document. So for instance, this image right here of uh, shoe swipe and everything, I think I just made that on like fireworks real easily, just the center part of the image. And then I copied the image over, and then what I did is I just used Word. There's some drawing tools in Word that I use to um, show you things like the link menu over here on the left, top left, and just kind of like, uh, you know, an arrow to all these things that, and what they do. So this is all you really need to create, and this will give your developers a good idea. So in the documents below, I included some stuff. Let's see if I can find them here. And here it is. Like This is the iPhone template. It's iPhone template.png. It's a file in there. So if you open this file in like some sort of image editor, you'll see all these things. And what you can do is you can just grab each one of these individually and put them on. This one's black and white. It's pretty bland. So, you know, whatever. It, it's... It does what you need it to do and gets the idea across. And then you can kind of draw what I just showed you with the highlights out and things like that for uh, people to see. The next thing I want to show you is Fluid UI. And Fluid UI is a nice site. I think it's, I don't know, it's 7 or $10 a month. I've used it in the past. I don't use it anymore because I just like to do it more organically. But here is one that you can do online. And look at all these menus and stuff that are available to you. So there's kind of this, um, you know, all these different things you can, you can put in the background. You can change the background color. Let's make it blue. If you wanted to add a triangle, I don't know why I'd add a triangle. But anyways, there's a triangle. There are just a ton of icons and things in here um, if you wanted to. So here's just some different stuff. I know if you go over here to the left where it says library, uh, we're just in the basic one that is the wireframe. If you were to go to iOS 8 or Android 4, this will give you like all the iOS images, all the standard like buttons that you see on most apps that you're using. So you can create it. And then what you do is if you just want to, you know, 
you want to add a page, you just add a page and, you know, double click it. And I don't know, there's just all kinds of stuff you can do here to add different things to create them. And it takes a little time, there's a little bit of a learning curve, but the nice thing that you can do with this is you can link from one page to the next, and then when you publish it out, you can actually see what it's going to look like and click through it on a screen. So you can make changes to it and send that to your developer rather than sending him a Word document every time you make a change or something like that to the spec. So that's that. Um, let's talk about backends. And, and backends are, you know, they're important. You're going to need a backend no matter what you do. You're either going to need reporting, so you're going to need some way to, to track that, or maybe you're going to have to have a way to, to add users, to get rid of users, things like that. So there's different things you can do about that. Um, there's just a lot of different considerations that you need to, to think about, such as um, for class offers, for instance, here's their backend, and their backend is actually a WordPress backend. And so what happens is they have a website where people can go in and log in and uh, book classes and things like that, and they have the mobile app. They're basically the same thing, except for the mobile app looks completely different because it's on a mobile device. Otherwise, you can do everything through the website that you can do through the mobile device. And so they use WordPress to manage this. And they actually are using this right here, which is called the Event Manager, which is a plugin for WordPress. So they can manage all their events from the back end. So they can, man they can add classes, they can delete classes, they can add users, they can add blocks of classes. So you get the idea that they're going to have to manage a lot on the back end. You might not have anything. It might just be something very simple where you don't need a back end. In the event that you do, you need to make considerations for what you want. So here we go. I'll show you the screen. And here's all the, all the classes that they have. Um, if they need to add more locations, they can add more locations um, and just various stuff. So here's all the studios and things like that that they're, that they're going through and using. Um, and it's really nice. So you, you, if you need something like that, if you need like a payment process, they're also taking payments through this. So um, it's actually through PayPal, although when you buy it, it doesn't look like you're in PayPal at all. So if you need payments, um, I use Braintree which Braintree is used by all the top companies now. Braintree just got bought by PayPal. So if you need a payment processor, I would recommend them for credit cards. Um, you do have to pay a transaction fee, but you're going to have to do that no matter who you go with. So um, Braintree is a very good one. So just consider that. And you know, you're going to want to include this in the spec. Like, hey, you guys need to integrate with Braintree. And when you integrate with Braintree, you know, into my accounts, things like that. Um, let's look at MailChimp. Uh, MailChimp is a way to manage all your email systems. You could use Get Responses. There's a number of companies you can use. I just happen to use MailChimp. So basically what MailChimp does is here, I'll give you a, a quick little overview of just this page. So here is MailChimp and what MailChimp does is it just automates our email processes. So here's a good one on the bottom, the second one from the bottom is registration confirmation. And when we click on that, you'll see, so here's a standard registration for the I teach members, which all you guys are. Thank you. The first thing you do is when you first sign up, I send your registration confirmation. You all got that email. And then one day after the email confirmation sends, I send you the thing for the VIP. So you get a email that says, Hey, join the VIP call. And it tells you what time and all that. And so, but I don't have to send that every week. It just automatically sends a day after you sign up to remind you of it. Now, this is a really simple thing. I could have 10 emails in here if I wanted to, and maybe you need that many emails. I have a guy that emails me. I signed up for some service and he emails, uh, I get an email from him like every day or every two days. And if I click, so what happens is I get an email, welcome. Then I get the second email, offer. If I click on the email for the offer, then I get a third email. If I don't buy, I get a third email. If I don't even open that second email, he's got a different email that he actually sends me. So he's got a whole funnel. It's like, if then it's like, if Jeremy opens the email and doesn't buy, we're going to send him this email in two days. If he opens the email and buys, now he's a customer and we'll treat him differently. But if he doesn't, we're going to send him another email down the line you know, two days later, and then four days later, he's going to say, and he knows if I looked at, he knows if I opened it or I didn't open it. And then he sends another email. So that he's got this whole automated system 
through MailChimp. And you may want to do something like that to really capture users, keep them involved, keep them going, keep them buying, keep them playing your game, whatever. If you add new features, you can, you can throw in emails and stuff like that. So again, the action items for this, for this chapter, um, create yourself a rough flow diagram, get on your phone, start looking at um, things that you like and saving them, email them to yourself, and then uh, put them in a Word document, put them in a PowerPoint document. If you have Photoshop, whatever you want to use, put it in there and start kind of creating a visual diagram. You'll need to do a lot of writing on your spec as well, but um, you know, you'll, have, you'll have plenty of space to do that and add images. I always think an image is better to show the developers actually what you want. Um, you can take your style tile and put a lot of the images from your style tile actually in your spec. So like the logo and everything looks good. If you want to use an online tool like Fluid UI, go ahead and do that. Make sure to go through the documents I've attached with my specs. There's one for Shoe Swipe, there's one for Class Hoppers. So go through and check out those because those are actually things I sent off to a developer um, to do for myself. And they did a great job with them. So that's a good starting point. Research back end systems. Um, the call that we'll do, the weekly call, this is a good time to really talk about back end systems and what you need and what you don't need. And I can point you in some directions as far as where to go. Obviously, you can search on Google and look for things like that, but um, I'll be able to really help you on that. Again, I've been a software engineer for 15 years, so I know a lot of different services that are out there. Maybe start creating accounts with uh, MailChimp and things like that. And let's get a specification. So get your specification going. If you don't want to do the specification, Take all of this kind of information, this rough information, and go to Fiverr and find somebody to do it for you because there's people out there and they do a great job with that and it's pretty cheap to do. So, you know, you could save yourself some time. I'm more hands-on. I know exactly what I want. So I'm going to create the spec myself. So maybe you're like me. Maybe you're not. I don't know. But uh, I'm happy that you're here and I'm happy that you're doing what you're doing. So keep going with the spec. And then once that spec is ready, we're going to talk about, uh, in the next chapter, we're going to talk about hiring developers, um, getting that job, posting on Elance and stuff like that. I have examples of all that. I got interview questions for you. So that's in the next chapter. Look forward to seeing you guys and uh, let's do it.